Shalom. All praises to the Heavenly Father. Hatun Apukuya. Praise be to the Earthly Mother, the Pachamama, and all of her earthly angels, the Hwaka. Praise be to the Holy Spirit, the Kahe, in the name of Hamashiach, Matzah, the Lamb, unification to the nation. So, guys, this is going to be part two. Um, <laughs> This, I'm just trying to get a little bit more information out um because i just wanted to give you guys something to dig on something to study on um you know so you guys don't think that i'm absolutely bat ish crazy with what i'm saying right now as far as uh the stuff that i'm exposing about west africa and the origins of many of these different nations so you guys can look into this yourself um i'm just going to give you a little bit more of what i've been studying and let me know what you think don't be afraid Okay, so we are going to be in Genesis chapter 36. Now, these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Esau took wives from the daughters of Canaan, Ada, the daughter of Elon, excuse me, the Hittite, and I'm not even going to try to say that, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite, which is the Horite, and Bash. Bashimath, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nebajoth. So that is who Edom married. He married three wives and had a concubine with another Hivite or Horite, right? And that is Amalek. Okay, so now we're going to talk, touch on briefly, very, very briefly, again, I just want to let, let this out so you guys have something to look into. The Iduma people. According to traditional history, Idu, the father of the Iduma, and the Iduma are an ethnic group uh, in West Africa. They're in the Bennu state, right? I have a lot to share about this, man. A lot. But, yes. Um... I do, the father of the Iduma, had several children who each established different areas. Hence the expression, I do, the father of the Iduma. I do, the father of Iduma, I do, who begat all, the Iduma. He also begot the following children. The Anana uh, Wu Jeno, who begot the children of Ig Wumale, and all these different peoples. Idum, who begot the people of Adoka, Agibi, Agabi, who begot the people of Atukbo, Iji, who begot the people of Oglewu, and all these different peoples. And when you study, I'm just going to let you know, uh, this is just going to come from a different video later on this series, but uh, they keep a very strict, strict, strict history of their forefathers and yours you could not just run up in there and act like you're one of them no they're gonna flat out ask you who who, who like who, what forefathers do you come from i'm dead serious they will flat out ask you that i do my traditional attires and colors the traditional uh I, of course it, it couldn't be red right let, let's see. The traditional colors of the Idumas are... <laughs> what? Huh? Red? Oh, okay. Are red and black stripes. This has only been around since the 1980s to foster a distinct Iduma identity. Really? Really? Well, that doesn't really make too much sense. Because we're about to see... And it's not going to be in this part. It's going to be in later parts. But we're going to see, man. We're going to see if... If their clothing is ancient or not, we're going to see. Even with the difference in dialectical speech, I do my people maintain one particular traditional attire popularly called the, I the APA, which indicates the language's unity. The color black uh, on the attire signifies the earth and burial shroud, while the red signifies royalty or red feather. The red feather is often fixed on the head of the traditional leader. The Iduma attire is well respected 
and is a significant symbol in the local meetings. Now let's get into what some of these people look like. Now, I'm not even going to cap, bro. These people are fine, bro. I'm not going to lie. Like this woman, this woman is fine as hell. I'm not going to, I'm not even going to hold you, bro. And they look, they don't even look like Africans to me, bro. They look straight up like us. But as I said, they're our twin brother. I didn't say that, but they, that's what they are. They're our twin brother. I don't care how they look. And again, later on in the series, we're going to discuss what type of role they had in the so-called transatlantic slave trade. Whatever one actually did occur. They wear a ton of red. What tradition are they trying to upkeep? I wonder. Don't believe. Okay, fine. That's cool. I'm going to hit you with the bang. <laughs> in in later parts you're gonna find out you're gonna like oh that's just they're just wearing red like that don't mean anything okay we're gonna see we're gonna see now let's look at this i do ma ancient warriors expert hunters and one of the most artistic ethnic groups in nigeria the i do ma are ancient expert warriors and Hunters, wait a minute. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. Well, this is awkward. The Iduma are known to be warriors and hunters of class, but hospitable and peace-loving. I'm sure they are. Listen, man, just because they're from Edom, that doesn't make them inherently wicked. In fact, a lot of those prophecies that were talking about the Edomites, it really was talking about the Kittim. But that does not excuse the type of, again, the type of role that they had in this whole uh, Psalms 83 crew. That does not excuse them. Many of these so-called black Native Americans are also Edomites, too. In fact, I shouldn't say many. But a certain sect of them are also Edomites as well. Now we're going to watch this video. Now some people think this video is hysterical. No, this, this guy is speaking some real, real truth. And you can hear it straight from the horse's mouth. I'm not going to say too much. We're just going to watch it. And then I'm going to catch you guys whenever I'm, I have free time to make the next part of this series. The Hausa and Fulani tribes are descendants of ancient Assyrians. Plus, in Nigeria, there is a remnant of Edomites. I know a lot of people say Isau is the white man, but they do not know African history. Also, I believe a remnant in North Sudan and Saudi Arabia. I do believe that Edo and Idoma are burnt to Hebrews, but not Israelite, but Edomite. The people of Edom currently settled in the Savannah region of Nigeria. They are not a missing race because I come from the tribe of Edom. The spelling has changed over the years from Edomia to Edoma, but the pronunciation is still the same. The name Aduma is still widely used in the present Edoma. Esau, whom the Edomas came from, had two wives. He married from the land of Canaan. The first wife was called Ada. Ada is a name that is still commonly used by Edomas. Ada is oh, by the way, um. As I've gone over, the reason why I'm telling you what the Hivites and the Horites look like, so you don't have any sort of confusion as to what Edom would look like. I, it doesn't matter if Esau was a quote-unquote white man or whether he was a ginger man. I don't believe Esau was a modern-day quote-unquote white man. I don't believe that. The reason, the main reason, again, I don't, that's not... The white, white skin is a very recent mutation. Even back then, even the seed line of Cain, they were red, right? They were red skinned the same way how Esau is red skinned. But it's not the same thing. Is it a lack of pigmentation? Could be. But the point is he still married pigmented people. He did. Both, both the Hivites and... Uh, the Ishmaelites were pigmented people. I don't know about the other 
like the the Hittite that he married, because some people say that the Hittites were, um, you know, the ancient Asians. But even so, the ancient people of China were also brown skinned, bro. So I don't I don't get it. How is how are the Edomites? How did they start off as being white? I don't it's not making sense to me whether Esau was white himself. It still doesn't make sense because the women he married were not. They weren't white. So how the hell was he was how like that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. They were a clan that intermarried with the Hivites or the Horites who are black people, as you can see. They're black and they and they look like Africans like they they don't look like the people I just showed you. Those those uh those black people who look like Shemitic. No, they look they look African They're with really big nose and, 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 and big lips and all that like exaggerated features. They look more like Africans than the people I just showed you. So they were intermarrying with them. So it's not making sense, bro. It's not making sense. But I'm going to tell you what I believe is the, is the truth, right? As to why or how Esau is the white man today. And it's not all white people, but it's a certain sect of them. But yes, today he is the white man in part. But there are still ancient Edomites who are still black looking is the first daughter of any family in Edoma. The name Edorm is pronounced as Edorm, which means- Look at that, the country of Edom. And that's actually the real way, or the root word of the word Edom, is actually with an A, Edom. He is my kind of person. Elah is one of the princes of Edorm. He was the son of Ada. But today the spelling of Ela has changed, but some of the people still spell it the old way. My surname is Ela, but the spelling has been changed to Ela. We are the people of Edom. Our tradition is the same with the Old Testament tradition of Israel. We have only one God who is in heaven. We traded in salt and worked with copper as copper was used as currency at that time. We were told by our fathers that we left our land because of war. We are spread over three states in Nigeria. We tease those that went further south uh, that they left us because they went to look for salt. Our women were very hairy with thick black hair before they started perming their hair with chemicals. The stripped Jewish cloth was our cloth until my father changed the color to red and black. When I asked my father why, he told me it was because of the red soil. The soil of the area we settled in Nigeria is also very red. Some of our names sound very much like Israeli names. For example, Anita and Onyahu sound very much like Netanyahu. Our customs include the peace offering and sin offering and most of the practices by Israel in the Old Testament. There would certainly be discordant notes when the issue of whether the Edoma speaking people of Nigeria are descendant of Esau is raised. In other words, could there be any historical link between the Edoma and the Biblical Edom? Only very few people would give the researcher any hearing ear over such an issue. The reasons are legion, but most obvious is the hatred built up against Esau and his descendants in the Bible. The Tempest- And again, there's no hatred here. There's no hatred here at all. You know, just because you descend from Esau, that doesn't inherently make you wicked. Doing wicked things makes you wicked. So as long as you're not being wicked, that doesn't mean that you are wicked. Again, those prophecies in Obadiah, particularly, that's talking about the Kittim. And I'm sure that's talking about, you know, the other wicked Edomites as well. But as far as, like, the violence that was done, that was mainly the Kittim. Or the Germanic people, or the Visigoths, or the Conquistadors. That's mainly what it was talking about, is, or like, to me at least. You know, the Portuguese also were very, <laughs> very violent. So it could be talking about them as well. The relationship between the descendants of Esau and those of Jacob was predicated on the age-old conflict between the two estranged brothers. According to the authors of African Bible, the Edomites were always the bitter enemies of the Jews, perpetrating the enmity of Esau and Jacob, and were always willing to assist an attacking army. The orchestrated attack on the Edomites was further amplified during the destruction of Jerusalem 
by the Babylonians in 587 BC. Esau bashing became such an obsession of the Israeli prophets that the whole prophecy of Obadiah was targeted at the Edomites who will be humbled because of your violence against your brother Jacob. Said prophet Obadiah on the charges against the Edomites, because of your violence against your brother Jacob, disgrace shall cover you. You shall be destroyed forever on the day when you stood, stood by, on the day when strangers carried off his possessions and strangers. And by the way, there's some people in Saudi Arabia who say that they're Edom, like their forefathers Edom, but they're not like like they're not wicked in that way again it seems like only really it seems like there's like a, a line of edom who are incredibly wicked and incredibly hateful and that might be the amalekites the amalekites and i'm going to show you who i think they are entered his gates and cast lots over jerusalem you were one of them for Prophet Obadiah, the judgment against Esau, which he delivered with much venom, was emphatic as he said, For near is the day of the Lord for all nations. As you have done, shall it be done to you. Your deeds shall come back upon your head. According to the Bible, God cursed Esau, and so everybody must distance himself from his roots or indeed his name. But as this research effort would show, there is no reason to be ashamed of Esau or his descendants. According to the Bible account, the Edomites, as Esau's descendants became known, established the Edomite Empire that was one of the most famous while it lasted. The Edomites had evolved a complex political structure with the king as its head long before the Israelites, that was the favored group, began the clamor for a king. In any case, the origin of Edomites has never been in doubt. The Bible was unambiguous in stating that Esau is Edom. The same Bible also dramatizes the birth of Esau, stating very clearly that he was the twin brother of Jacob, father of the Israelites. Describing him at birth, the Bible said of Esau, and the first came out red. He was like a hairy garment all over, so they called him Esau. Afterwards, his brother came out, and, and his hand took hold of Esau's head, so his name was called Jacob. Edo monarchs demonstrate strong affinity with ancient Egyptian gods and pharaohs, with which they share identical authority, grandeur, and a great deal of reverence from their subjects, like the pharaohs. Do you guys see this helmet? I will be going... <laughs> Bro, when I show you what this helmet actually is from, you will not disagree with me that these people descend from the Edomites. Let's keep going. Edo monarchs are God kings. Because they are God kings and God sons, they are considered divine and worshipped by their subjects, who speak to them always with great reverence, at a distance, and on bended knees. Great ceremonies surround every action of the Edo king. The kings of the Bini also adopt Osirian titles of the open eye, signifying omniscience and omnipotence. Edo wow, bro. Come on, man. These are Canaanites and Edomites. And some are, again, some of our people are in the mix. But just because they look like you, have to, you have to come up with more than that, bro. You can't say, oh, these people look like me. Nah, bro. You got It got to be more than that, man. It got to be more. And what did he say about the kings, how they're treated as god kings or whatever? Hey, we didn't even have a king until Saul. Like, that was way later. These people are predicated off of kings. Esau was predicated off of kings. And so were the other nations. How are these Israelites? That doesn't make any sense. Even the Hyksos didn't have an all-ruling power king. No, they had separate different rulers in different areas. So, you guys have to understand what is Israelite history. Because these people obviously are not Israelites. The monarchs, when they transit to the beyond, are like Egyptian pharaohs, set up in state, in a linked series of underground chambers, surrounded with paraphernalia of power and all the items they would require for their comfortable sojourn in the ethereal world. Edo, Edomite, Edoma, Edumia are all related words. The Greek called the inhabitants of this region Edo means people with reddish skin tone. The ancient name of Edo is Edu. Edu was a progenitor of the Edo or Edoma, hence the expression Edoma, the father of the Edoma. The royal lines of the Edo have been orally transmitted. 
Idu who begot six sons, Anana Vugino who begot the children of Igbu Male, Ali Nagvo who begot the people of Ogboji, Idum who begot the people of Adoka, Agabi who begot the people of Atukpo, AJ who begot the people of Oglivo, Ebibi who begot the people of Umogidi in Adoka, and Ode who begot the people of Yala. The point of origin of humans is Africa and from the beginning humans exhibited a wide range of physical traits including skin color, hair texture, eye shape etc. Hassan are one of the oldest people groups of Africa and they have a yellow skin tone. The people of Upper Nile had both black and red skin tones. Images of black and red Nubians appear on ancient Egyptian monuments. Patry's study of ancient images suggested to him that Egypt was the product of racial mixture. He found images of Nubians in which some have black skin, others red skin, and some have brown skin. This confirmed what had been discovered by the 1828 Franco-Italian expedition to Egypt led by Jean Francois Champollion and Ippolito Rossellini. Below is a detail from one of Rossellini's drawings showing both black and red Nubians taken captive by Egyptians under Ramesses II. The red skin tone is especially evident in people of haplogroup R1b. Among these people were the Edo of Nigeria and Beni and the Edomites. The Edo and Edomites are related genetically. These wow, bro. But hey, this is why I say you guys can't get caught up in this in this haplogroup, in this haplogroup stuff as if like this haplogroup equals this. Because this haplogroup right here, R1b, this is obviously a Shemitic haplogroup. But that does not mean that it's all one thing. It doesn't. Esau is absolutely uh, tied in with this migration pattern or haplo group. Absolutely is. I don't see how he's not. Let me show you something real quick. He has the map there, so I need to show it again. But particularly haplo group R1B, uh, you, uh, bro. U one oh six, like as and and U one five two. To me, this is definitely the Edomites, bro. Because look at all these different people. Uh, Louis the third of France. Right, this dude right here. Uh, the Habsburgs, the Habsburgs, absolutely. If I don't. Bro, if the Habsburgs are not Edomites, I don't know who they are, bro. But they were also of this haplo group. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, all these different people, they were of the same haplo group, the same migration pattern. You know, the Holy Roman Empire, they were this of this haplo group as well. Now let's read this a little bit. Because we're going to find out where did this particular one come from? This U uh, one oh six haplo group or migration pattern the term snp pronounced snip means a single nucleotide polymorphism or a change at a single position on the y chromosome dna strand from the usual result found in other haplogroups y dna snips are very reliable and are used by population geneticists to arrange the human family tree via the direct paternal line of descent. See, this is what you act this is what actually tells you who like like this is what actually perfectly passes from father to son. This is what tells you the 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 line of the Y chromosome, not haplogroups. Haplogroups are an estimation of this. But this is what you actually need. The thing is that you it's hard to do research for this because you would need to test everybody so because you can't test everybody you have to use guessing or estimations that's what haplogroups are they're estimations so that people can collect data but they're not perfect so they actually did deep research and looked into the paternal lineage of this haplogroup and this is what they're about to tell you where it originated from and where did it go what was its migration pattern the SNP form a line of descent out of Africa into the Near East and further around the world. Haplogroup R descends from a line that made its way from the Near East to the Far East, then back west towards Europe. 
So again, these are a group of people that went around colonizing and taking people's stuff. Skipping down, depending on which branch of the U-106 a member descends from, the people on that branch adapted to a variety of different cultures along the way. Again, they just went around taking people's stuff. I read another part, I can't find it in, like anymore, but it said like they, this haplogroup group pretty much went around um, like killing most of the men and raping all the women. That's what this, this does. That's what these people did. They were barbarians, bro. They were barbarians. That's exactly what they did over here. Including various derivate, derivatives of Slavic, Latin, Celtic, Belgi, Saxon, Viking, and other cultural groups. U-106 is a family, not a culture. Yes, because they did not have a culture. Some families of historic nobility have paperwork ancestry that reaches far, um, reaches back farther into the genealogical gap of the Dark Ages. This enables us to compare the paperwork to the DNA as follows. Both the Bourbon, Bourbon family of the Spanish and the former French royal families and the Witten family of saxe coburg from which the British and the Belgian royal families and the former Portuguese and Bulgarian families, royal families descend, are confirmed to descend from the same branch of R1B U106. I'm not making this up, bro. I'm not making this up. I promise you I'm not making this up. This is the seed of Amalek. In my opinion, of course. <laughs> That's the seed of Amalek. But let's continue. These are among Abraham's ancestors who came out of Africa. These were originally river peoples who moved along the river systems and mountain ridges. They disappeared rather widely and settled in different regions, including Tigris, Euphrates River Valley, and Southern Europe. Some lived in the red. Of course, um, he doesn't know where the where Abraham actually came out of. But it's funny because now it makes sense why they found R1B skulls in the atacama desert aka the original land of edom it's funny red city of petra the capital of nabataean territory in edom moreover with israel coming under greek persian and later roman rule and dependency renewed waves of jewish refugees including traders and artisans began to set up more communities in egypt Cyrenaica, Nubia, and Punic Empire, notably in Carthage. From Carthage, they began to scatter into various historically established as well as newly emerging Jewish communities south of the Atlas Mountains, nearer to the modern day Mauritania, Niger, Mali, Nigeria, Senegal, Cameroon, and Congo. Several Jewish nomadic groups also moved across the Sahara from Nubia and the ancient kingdom of Kush towards West Africa. Various East and West African na ethnic nations lay verifiable claims to their Jewish ancestral. Okay, so this is a lot more of this stuff is more like conjecture and stuff. But yeah, uh, there you have it. <laughs> there you have it. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably take a break from this because I worked on a lot of videos and stuff. So I'll hit you guys at another time. Hope you guys learned something. May peace be with you.